All these attorneys are spitting. She's in a house with his mother. Oh my God. Good old Ruby Frankie. You guys know my favorite thing to start the stream off with is a little bit of court TV, a little bit of Vinnie Politan, giving us the information that we need. And there's nothing I love more than seeing a bunch of professional attorneys roast Ruby Frankie. I love court TV. They give us accurate information. They give us information on time. They dive deep. They have the opinions of professionals. What I really like here is they don't normally cover YouTubers. They don't normally cover like, you know, YouTuber, whatever is going on. YouTubers get arrested all the time, but they really go in on this case. Let's see what they have to say. Tell me exactly what's happened. Oh. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. This is the neighbor that made the 911 call when Ruby Frankie's son broke out to go ask for food and water. I'm gonna play this line one more time, his opening line, because if you listen to his voice, the disbelief, the disappointment in his ha like his voice. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he uh, said he just came from a neighbor's house, and we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry, and he's thirsty. He has duct tape around each ankle. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's sores around him. I think the, the good chance he's been... Uh, he also said... Oh, and he has been around his ankles. I mean, his wrists as well. Okay, this boy has been... He <laughs> needs... listen to him cry. Look guys, I don't like listening to 911 calls really. Back in the day, like true crime stuff, everybody's playing a 911 call. It's it's a part of the story and I get that. Back in the day, I'll listen to a 911 call, you know? But now, I the more I think about it, I don't love, particularly in murder cases, uh, the moment where somebody's pleading for help and they didn't make it, I personally don't love listening to that at all. Um, no judgment for you. if you're listening to 911 calls because it's, it's a part, it's a whole part of it, right? It's a part of the story. Just telling you my thing. This one, even though it's not like a, somebody's final moments, it's really tough hearing how heartbroken this guy is for the kid. Like that this has happened, that maybe he didn't notice sooner. A little heavy for me. Vinny, save us. Oh my God, dude, Vinny is a dad. He's about to go in on this. You would think that this 12 year old boy had escaped you know he'd been abducted and he was put in someone's dungeon and, and and made his way out and he was just looking for some food and some water that's not the case he's in a house with his mother oh in a house with his mother escaping from a house with his mother get him Vinny. who's his mother ruby frankie there she is got some pictures of her mother of six 41 years old and one of those mom fluencers. 2.28 million subscribers, 1,200 videos uploaded of the family, really yeah. of the kids. I mean, you look at these, at the- uh, Get him, Vinny. Every video is about what's happening to the kids, the kids, the kids. This was a woman, as a mom fluencer, was trying to show how you should be raising your children. That was like her thing. And she's now charged with six counts of felony child Six. Well, a felony. Bro, is it just me or is Vinny going in right now? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing on the channel? Do y'all wish I went harder? I don't have the credentials for that. See, Vinny, he was a former prosecutor, but I see the way I'm listening to him. I'm like, yes, Vinny, go, go. Y'all know that that gif of the brown dog? Y'all are always posting it in my Discord when the dog is like, hurr, hurr, and like, that's me, but like back up for Vinny. That's how I feel right now. Well, that's actually, that's us. Well, tonight, more information, folks from the search warrant, the affidavit from the search warrant of the house where this 12-year-old boy escaped from. Mm. Upon arrival, officers found that a 12-year-old victim had duct tape around their ankles and appeared to be emaciated because the victim was abnormally thin and weak. Medical personnel removed the duct tape and located open oh wounds. God. The victim, in, and remember, 12-year-old boy, informed officers and medical personnel that the wounds were from the rope that was used to tie the victim to the ground. The victim informed the officers that pepper and honey were used to dress the wounds. Stop. I need to ask you guys. You tell me. Pepper and honey? Is this some, like, holistic mom shit? I need to know. I'm looking. I'm looking this up. 
Because I heard of things before where people were like putting cayenne pepper. But pepper, pepper and honey? They use, no, it's not regular pepper. It's cayenne pepper. Oh my God, no. Jody Hildebrandt dressed the children's wounds with cayenne pepper and honey. Oh my God. I apologize guys. Look, pepper and cayenne pepper, especially with open wounds, do two completely different things. What the fuck? Let me let Vinny tell it to us. Are you kidding me? So they searched the house, they searched her phone and all the electronic communications, and they've arrested Jody Hildebrandt, who was a friend and fellow podcaster of Ruby Frankie. Because that eight passengers page, that's been taken down. A lot of controversy, but even more now. Unreal. Let's bring back in our think tank, Eklund Mercy, Kirk Nurmi, Holly Davis. Kirk, um, it goes from bad to worse. You're putting like pepper on open wounds, wounds from ropes. He needs used to say to cayenne because that makes it 80 times worse. And then covered worse. with duct tape. Some people see like honey as a soothing thing, so I didn't know if this was like a holistic thing or if it was. T but if you guys recall, in the Bridget Herrett case, I don't talk about Bridget's case like too, too often anymore. One of the things that her dad used to do was putting cayenne pepper like on her wounds as a form of. T so yeah, cayenne pepper, a, a hot cayenne pepper, to me, that's a lot different than, you know, black pepper and honey or something like that. Which by the way, that sounds like a <coughs> seasoning. Like, what are you doing? Get some Neosporin, sister. Yeah, you know, Vinny, sadly, I think this particular incident is probably gonna be the, just the tip of the iceberg of the kind of perverse parenting, I guess you wanna call it, that Miss Frankie was engaged in. Because keep in mind here, this boy was emaciated he's running out to the neighbor the neighbor makes a comment to the 911 caller that they've had problems with this before the young child blames himself so it tells you it's not the first time this is probably a pattern of conduct for miss frankie and here she thinks she's this super parent she probably feels invincible she's got all these fans so she's going to parent her way and it doesn't oh really God. matter what anybody thinks of it and i think we're going to really see as this investigation unfolds the kids are interviewed etc that there's probably going to be more charges coming sadly because this is likely not a starting point but fortunately the end point he touches on something else that is really really interesting the guilt and the self-blame that the children will feel going through these experiences and he's absolutely right to ruby frankie she's super mom she's doing everything right she's raised several kids before she's had a successful channel from being such a great mom she doesn't do anything wrong but if you don't like what she's doing then it's your fault you're the problem and that's very easy to teach a toddler so i guarantee that guy's absolutely right they have serious self-esteem issues serious self-blame issues and that's what happens when you have a narcissistic parent i i know a lot of y'all got him when you have the narcissistic parent they can't concede any power they can't admit that they did anything wrong in fact they've never done anything wrong what did you do to deserve it, it, it like sorry i'm triggering some of you guys just by trying to explain the scenario but this is how this stuff happens and so we're so shocked by the physical aspects of what all happened from the starvation to the wounds but the emotional toll that this leaves oh man it's gonna be really really tough to hear but i hope that it will at least be cathartic for those kids in some way to tell their stories you know to police officers and be told that that was wrong by the right counselors and to finally get a little bit of healing early because a lot of us didn't realize until we were in our 20s and 30s that maybe mom might have been wrong you know now it's not mom and dad who've been charged it's mom and her friend and co podcaster Dude, Jody Hildebrandt mom and dad at this point were separated and I guess she had the kids and they're at Jody Hildebrandt's house um, what what are your thoughts about this case and this whole situation I mean, this is obviously a psychopath and a person obsessed with the control of parenting. I'm a divorce lawyer, Vinny. Yes. And when you've got a mom that's got control issues, it's very rare that you don't have a dad with control issues, too. Mm. And I understand he wasn't in the home. I have no information about his involvement in the case, except I've read that he's wanting the kids back. He thinks that the courtroom should be closed to the media and things like that. But I would be very, very curious to know if, if the dad had absolutely no idea that the mother of 
his six children had such terrible abuse issues. Your children don't get emaciated overnight. That, that is a right. prolonged and continuous pattern of abuse. And I would be absolutely shocked if this husband had no idea about what his children were suffering at the hands of his, I suppose, still wife. I believe they're separated, not divorced. Yes, yeah, separated, so, not divorced, yeah. correct. Yeah. I mean, to me, there's obviously a reason why he's separated, and, and, and we're all curious to hear it. Um, but I would, I'm a little bit suspicious of, of any story that doesn't have dad aware of Ooh. this pattern of behavior. Yes, girl. All these attorneys so far are spitting. This guy points out the way that Ruby blamed the children and put all this psychological damage on it. This lady talking about, well, I'm suspicious if the dad don't know nothing. Oh, and he wants the kids back? Well, let's see if the kids want to go back home with dad. That'll tell us a lot of information. Lady up in the top right, what you gotta say? All right, Eklund Mercy, I am gonna show you um, some pieces of the eight passengers um, show or channel from YouTube. These are some of their early videos, not some of the later ones, some of the early ones. Oh no. Let's take a look and I wanna hear what you have to say about it. Oh no. I'm trying to make it sound beautiful and it's not working. You have been waiting for two years for today. Welcome to my recital. I, I've been working on the songs for you. Once Jesus. a year on Thanksgiving, I want to at least see you in a half decent shirt. That's not his school uniform. And you look handsome. And, you, and he doesn't want it to be recorded. Do you guys think he was hiding from the camera? Seemed like he just didn't want the camera on him. <laughs> Helping grandma in the kitchen. Getting ready for our big feast. Love how everyone's ignoring the camera. Sherry turned 16 in March, and she is Not like... ready for her, Okay, Sherry, come here. Sherry, are you looking more forward to dating or driving? I get the feeling that you are more like the typical poster child for the dad who is mean to the boys as they come to pick up the daughter. Mean. Now that she's... Whoa, am I tripping? Or did Court TV pick some of the most interesting clips? I thought this montage was gonna be a little bit different, but it's showing how much people didn't wanna be on camera, how much Ruby's sh shoving the camera in everybody's faces and trying to create a story out of literally nothing, saying weird shit to her kids. The kids saying, well, dad's not mean. Eklund, anything strike you about those videos? Cause something, I noticed something. Oh, what you, what y'all got? Sorry. I didn't see any children smiling. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -mm. I, um, a couple of years ago, I read something that stated that um, mental health issues are going to expand because of social media. Yes, that's true. Because I have been online since I was five years old and I am sick. There is something wrong with me and it's only going to get worse from here because there is no TikTok. I was on Neopets, okay? <laughs> here is like a munchausen by youtube um likes oh. and views are are addictive people are addicted to it and on top of that you can get financed from it so it's likes and views that are already addictive and on top of that there are you can get you can make it pretty lucrative based on your followings so it's a breeding ground for narcissists it's just mm. you know and that edit button essentially gave them the world so we're going to see more cases like this unfortunately because um social media and because of the supply and demand it doesn't matter what your house looks like on the on um in the back of the screen. What what matters is what can garner the lights, what can garner the yep. views. Can we just round of applause for all of the lawyers having different perspectives and they were just all fantastic? Like that was 
That was good. That was super good. Well, keep in mind, though, Vinny, we're not seeing the abuse on YouTube, right? We're seeing the a byproduct of it. But my guess is that this was probably her parenting style even before YouTube came along. Maybe her kids presented out in public is great, and she decided to start this YouTube channel. And that is, as Eklund said, maybe a bit of narcissism, and it comes out. But I think whatever was there, whatever mental problems were there in the parenting style, mm -hmm. I don't think putting videos together gets someone to a point where they're going to abuse their children, where they're going to emaciate them and they're going to put them with duct tape. Yeah. I think that's inside someone to begin with. And if they decide to actualize it somehow on social media, I think that's a different issue of narcissism, not the abusive personality. So uh, Holly Davis, what do you- Also, one of the hallmarks of having a narcissistic parent, which is disorienting for kids, is the narcissistic parent goes out into the world and they have this curated image that they project. Maybe they're a dedicated member of the church. Maybe they are the nice neighborhood lady that's always bringing around treats. Maybe they're the best PTA member. And everyone thinks, oh my God, uh, you know, Amy is so awesome. Amy is so fantastic. Well, she's just the best. And then back home, the mom is very emotionally and mentally abusive to the child. And the kid is confused because everyone around them is saying, oh, Amy's the best. Oh, you're so lucky to have your mom. Oh, she's so great, isn't she? And the kid's like, um, that's what was happening to all of these kids. It's really disorienting. And what does that create? A perpetual cycle of self-blame. Somebody in there said it. They said, and it feels like no one will believe you. And then what happens when you think no one will believe you about the narcissistic parent you decide to either assimilate into their reality and then you have to lie to yourself and then you start lying to yourself about everything you start denying your own reality denying your own feelings denying your own emotions and then you become me anyways okay let me finish up this video then we have to get to the circumstances next you were found in and then i hope that the system does a good job and i hope that the the you know um <laughs> Child Protective Services in the trial is going to do a good job of giving them their voice. And then I think that they deserve to heal. I understand that the oldest daughter um, who was not a victim of, or who wasn't found as part of this investigation is wanting to sit in on the trial. I would expect her to participate. Um, it'd be very interesting to see if she chooses to participate against her mother. Um, mm -hmm. But I expect we'll see that since she's about 20 years old, so. There is a strong chance that a lot of the kids won't speak out against their mom or they won't testify against their mom because they're afraid of repercussions. Because in their worldview, mom is the epicenter of everything. She holds a lot of power. And so they may not speak up and that's okay because it's part of their journey. And then, you know, later in their life, they'll come to whatever assumptions or you know, things that they need to, but sometimes they won't and that's okay. I think this is something that the children deserve to have a voice and then they deserve to try to heal. Yeah, I, I saw, speaking of social media, I was flicking through today and I saw something really stuck with me. He said, the definition of success when your children as adults want to spend time with you. Oh. That's success. So I don't know if she's going to be successful. the better court TV videos I feel like we've ever watched. I mean that in the best way possible, okay? It's just, it's good.